Hey guys, it's Bill from Linden, Tennessee. So here's a little update video. Not much has changed since the last video. Uh, I have actually finished the rear carpeting and uh, obviously the seats are in, but the carpet looks fabulous, uh, if I do say so myself. I'm a little annoyed that whenever I cut this piece of uh, particle board, that I, I cut this piece a little bit too, I cut this just a little bit too short. This side is great. This side is a little too short. Oh well, what are you gonna do? I drilled and tapped some holes into the structure, into the metal frame of the battery box below here, and then just put some a couple countersunk uh, screws in there. Some little quarter inch countersunk screws, five sixteenth screws. Uh, there's the subwoofer. Been doing a little bit of tuning on the subwoofer crossover points and got it sounding pretty good pretty booming um, we're not like brr, brr, rattling license plate or anything like that but it's still pretty cool um yeah and you sit in the you sit in the seats and you got some bass going on you can feel it through the whole car because that subwoofer is just firing straight down and uh causing the whole dang thing to vibrate so that's kind of fun Let's see what else. Uh, kind of run into a little stumble, a little stumbling block. The EV controls controller that let me get grab me a flashlight that I normally well, that I have mounted up under here. Um, that little relay panel is just sort of dangling, as you can see. So I've got that EV control controller mounted right there. Um, it communicates to me through an iPad uh, via, v via Bluetooth and use that to, I guess, uh, tell the controller to go ahead and flash the Tesla drive unit control board uh, so that it'll work. From what I understand, some people have just plugged this thing in and it worked. Mine didn't do that. And when I tried to connect the iPad to it, it didn't show any Bluetooth devices present. So I wasn't able to go in and manually do that. Um, I've heard that EV controls is really good with tech support. There's a team that just set a electric streamliner world speed, not streamliner, but electric car world speed record at Bonneville. I think uh, they use a couple TC controllers. Um, Kevin Erickson, he did a electrolyte, um, well, it's, it's a, a satellite, Plymouth Dodge satellite. He calls it electrolyte. Beautiful silver car. Uh, it went to semen. It's been getting all kinds of praise for that thing. Ma magazine articles and all kinds of stuff. But anyway, he used it and he uh, ran into a couple problems with it and said that their tech support was really, really good with him too. And I have found the same uh, personally. They're really good. They just, um, you know, they're not immediate on replies. They're busy people, but they do get back with you. Um, certainly within you know, within a day, which is, you know, two or three times better than who I was dealing with private previously. But, uh, yeah. And, and, um, heck they were even helping me today. They, you know, gave me a couple suggestions on what to do. Take the, I took the controller out and just put 12 volts to it directly separate from the car just to see if it worked and it didn't. Uh, so I think probably the next step is going to be, they're going to have me send the controller back to them and, you know, they'll bench test it and try and figure out what happened. Um, yeah, so, you know, that's kind of, you know, kind of annoying because it'd be cool to get this thing out and see if it goes. But, um, you know, that's all right. I don't care. It'll wait. It's waited this long. It'll wait another, you know, week or two. So what else have I had done? Oh, yeah. So this is kind of fun. I don't really know why I did this other than I just wanted to. I had this two-inch receiver hitch just laying around the shop. Um, and I put it on there. I got the bumper off, and you can kind of see right there, I got it notched. I got the bumper notched around it on this side, and on the other side, there's like a, uh, like a maybe a three-inch round tube that goes between the frame rails, so I had to notch that out also, and I've just got this thing welded pretty solidly to that tube that goes across. I was going to put some uh, little support gussets down here and have them bolt up to the the, the bumper here, but I don't think it's going to be necessary. I mean, I'm not going to be doing anything crazy with this thing. Um, you know, the worst, worst case is I'd have a, 
trailer sitting on it on a ball hitch and use the winch maybe to pull something up on the trailer i don't i don't know what winch winch that i'll eventually have uh, and that may or may not work anyway now that i'm looking at it that light is really close to where the cable would come out <laughs> it'll probably rip that light off so that may have to get moved um but we can do that later so this was actually a pain in the butt to put on here i don't i would go so far as to say getting that little receiver hitch mounted on there was probably the most difficult uh <laughs> one of the most difficult things i had to do on this thing uh and the reason is it has to be adjusted um in about five or six axes axi has to be adjusted uh front to back because i wanted it to kind of be flush with this bar right here and then has to be adjusted like for yaw for the, the front of it to be left and right has to be adjusted for pitch the front of it being up and down and roll the thing you know so it sits level um yeah so what a pain in the butt and so to do that uh i had a little i had some stuff lined up here so i could talk about that but i don't have it anymore um well to do that what i did is i had two sort of eighth inch pieces of just just scrap metal laying around i had it up on top here and just sort of taped to the body of this two inch receiver i had that there and then i could push up from the bottom and i had a clamp that went here to just sort of hold the front i put a tack welded this on the front right here and tack welded that so it would be flat up against this face here so it would hold this face square to the bumper here 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 so that would hold that and then this clamp would kind of hold the front and then i could go to the back <laughs> and with a level with a magnetic level stuck you know on the bottom of the receiver hitch i could hold the back up where it needed to be so that it was level hold it there turn the level around sideways 90 degrees and rotate it so that it turned that way oh yeah and the other way the other thing is i had to get it centered this way too so all of that <laughs> That was that just kind of sucked, um, but you know I managed. I I did the first time I did it, I had it kind of level in all the directions, but I didn't have it centered left or right, so I had to cut that weld out and grind them off. It was just little spot welds, of course, but little tack welds. Um, but yeah, eventually I you know got it all up there and held together and tack welded and tack welded again and again and. You gotta be really careful when you're welding stuff because uh, whenever you do weld stuff, the weld itself you know, goes onto the metal as molten puddle. And then when it cools, when it solidifies, it shrinks and it tends to pull whatever it is that you're welding. So, you know, if you, if in this example, if I welded it over here, um, whenever I stopped welding, it would tend to do one of these numbers and tilt it. Now, not significantly, it wouldn't go that much, but it'd be enough to go from level to not level. And it wouldn't take a whole lot for it to be pretty obvious. Um, yeah, so, you know, that's a lot. So, yeah, so then that little dude just kind of slides right there, and a little pin goes here in the side, and there it is. And, uh, the neat thing is, is, uh, for this particular hitch, let me see if I can find the hole. Yeah, for this particular hitch, um, you know, it doesn't stick out so far that you could walk by it and whack your knee, uh, which is what happens on the back. <laughs> back receiver hitch if you have a that ball sitting on the back receiver hitch and walk by you will 100 percent guaranteed hit your knee or your shin at least once a day or maybe a week uh, but with this one you really can't you'd have to you'd have to really try to, to hurt yourself so that's pretty cool i'm excited about that uh it's probably it's just one of those things that i'll probably never use but it'll be there if i do and yeah i took a uh, I took my jack stands over here and just double checked. I was going to, I think my suspension might be out of alignment a little bit back here. So I took four jack stands on the corners there and ran a piece of string, uh, sort of around the perimeter of the wheels around the, around the perimeter of the Jeep. Um, and then held them about a, you know, 16th or an eighth of an inch off of the tires and, um, just, you know, made it so that the distance between the string and the tires was the same on all four tires and that would at least tell me if the 
axles are parallel to each other. Um, yeah, and to a certain extent, it'll tell me if they're perpendicular to the vehicle too, because you know if the if the front of this one there's more you know if the, if the string is touching on the back here and there's space here, that means that the front of this tire is in. So that means that this whole axle is sort of twisted to you know the right, I guess you'd say. That this this would be forward and the other one would be back. Now, you know, if it's if it's off like a sixteenth of an inch here, that could equate to you know more. You know, that could equate to a few degrees being off, and it could uh, potentially throw the steering wheel off. But anyway, I ran the string around it, and it's really really close. Um, the other thing it could do is it would tell me, you know, if my tires are roughly, um, you know, if my toe in is roughly correct, it'll tell me that. Um, but well, and it, it's, that's all pretty close. My, my alignment was off a little bit. My steering wheel was crooked with the wheels pointing straight. So I was able to adjust that for sure. So what I'll do is when I get this thing on the road, I'll just take it to a shop and have them throw it up on a four wheel alignment jig and they can just tell me what needs to be done with it. Uh, unfortunately the procedure for adjusting the alignment on this suspension is a horror. It's just a nightmare. Um, I mean... I really hope that this long arm kit uh, makes the road manners, the driving manners, road manners of this Jeep nice because I tell you what, I've said it before, I'll say it again, this thing has just been a, a thorn in my side for this whole conversion process and it doesn't get any easier once I get it on the road because if I do an alignment and it turns out that it's not quite right, adjusting it is a real pain in the butt and the, the shop wouldn't, I don't, I don't think the shop would want to do it. And if they did want to do it, they'd charge me by the hour and it ended up costing a fortune. So anyway, but, um, yeah, so that's where we're at. So I'm overall, I'm done. I think I'm basically done. I need to at some point make a center console. Uh, I need an armrest and some cup holders. Um, but I could do that kind of at any time. Um, and then, uh, you know, once we sort this thing out with the controller, then I can, uh, get it on the road and start testing it. And, uh, That'll be fabulous. I need to get a top. I've been looking at uh, frameless tops. So from the factory, there was uh, one of these little pickup points here. There was like this complicated frame situation. I think these holes were used for to mount it somehow. I have another top that a guy gave me. I traded it some seats for it, but I don't even know if it's any good. Um, and I'm not even sure how to install it, but, you know, I have that. And I will try and put that on there. But I think I'm going to go with a frameless top because the frameless top sort of sticks to this contour more. The frame top kind of comes out here and sort of does an abrupt cut down. And I think the frameless looks cooler. So it's probably what I'm going to go with. But, you know, there you go. That is it for now, I think. Uh, hopefully the next update will be me showing you how this thing runs and, you know, how noisy the transmission still is. <laughs> so okay guys thank you for watching and we'll talk to you next time